space. Uh, David, what percentage of rental income do you allocate to maintenance and capex? Uh, good question. Um, maintenance, I so I do when I'm running numbers on a turnkey, and this is specific to turnkeys because maintenance on a non-turnkey would be a totally different story um, that I would not be able to tell you what I estimate for because I haven't really done that a whole lot. Um, but the two expenses, uh, let me clarify, two expenses that I calculate an estimate for is 7% for vacancy, depending on where I'm buying. Sometimes I'll check in with the seller and I'm like, what do you guys usually see for vacancy? And I usually do 5% for repairs. Um, I would not blame you at all if you go a little bit higher on that. Um, the way that the repair, so vacancy is what it is. And keep it in mind, when we take estimates, when we estimate the monthly cash flow, if we take 5% of the rental income every month and 7% of the rental income every month and allocate that towards vacancy and repairs, remember that vacancy and repairs aren't happening every month. So it's not just that small amount that you're keeping, but it's almost like kind of building a nest egg. So if you don't have a repair for a year and a half, but you've out of your estimates, you were taking into consideration money for that repair, then it, um, I'm not getting my phrasing right. Uh, it pays for that repair later. So it's been kind of spread out over every month. So just to clarify that. Um, so on a turnkey, in theory, you really shouldn't have a lot of maintenance going on at first. Most turnkey providers offer a scope of work warranty. Once you buy, it may be for 90 days up to a year where they say, hey, if anything goes wrong that should have been included in the rehab, we'll cover it. You know, bring it to our attention, we'll go over it, and if it's something that we were responsible for, we'll cover it on our own dime. So that's one reason you shouldn't have a lot of maintenance in the first year. Hopefully your tenants that have recently been placed are staying there. If an unexpected turnover happens, that's another story. But And if you have decent quality tenants, in theory there should not be a lot of maintenance going on. Um, and then with the turnkey, so here's a CapEx conversation about turnkeys. It comes up a lot, a lot of people ask about CapEx. I don't know of any turnkey provider or anyone in the turnkey world who allocates a CapEx estimate expense every month. And the reason for that is that in theory, because this property has been freshly rehabbed, um, which includes all the big ticket, it should include all the big ticket items, roof, plumbing, electrical, hot water heaters, major appliances. There should be no, and keyword should, because we are talking rental properties here, there should be no big ticket items for while, like I usually have seven years in my head, there's really no reason, assuming the property inspector verified the condition of the roof, the plumbing, the electric, big appliances, all that kind of stuff, there really shouldn't be any CapEx items for quite some time. We'll, we'll call it seven years, seven to 10 years. Um, and a lot of turnkey providers kind of have that 10 year mark in their head. What could go wrong in the next 10 years? And that's what we're gonna rehab and hope that it does not go wrong in the first 10 years. Um, so with the theory being that CapEx isn't gonna happen until then, that's why people leave it out of their, uh, expen their expenses and cash flow calculations. Um, and a lot of turnkey, um, turnkey investors, I don't know why I keep saying, I've, I'm telling you, for anyone tuned on, I've just, I was telling everybody, I just worked four days at the flight school, filling in at the front desk, and I'm spent. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm not even getting my words right. Um, so CapEx, um, Oh, a lot of turnkey investors have a theory that their plan is to hold the turnkey property until right before the CapEx items start going bad. Um, that is a strategy with turnkeys. A lot of my turnkeys, I got such good deals on them. I'm kind of planning to hold them for a lifetime because it won't take me that long to pay them off and they've just been really good assets. But um, you can either hold them for a lifetime or sell them whenever you want. But some people have the idea in their head that they will plan to sell before say that seven year mark or, and again, we don't always know exactly when everything's gonna start going bad, but that's one exit strategy for the turnkey folks. Um, so I think that's why you don't see a lot of CapEx things. So with that said, um, you're asking what percentage of rental income do you allocate for maintenance and CapEx? Um, I do 5% for maintenance. Again, I wouldn't blame you if you do seven or 8% and then that is averaged over time. So it's not a one-time thing. Um, and also keeping along these same lines, the old, the longer you hold the property, the more the maintenance is going to increase. So that's why we start with those estimates in the beginning when in theory there should be zero. And it's almost like building the nest egg, save up, save up, 
and you're kind of looking at an average, if you will. I feel like I've kind of talked in circles about that, but I hope you understand. Um, not you personally, but just everyone listening. If you don't, uh, shoot me a message to be like, what the hell are you saying? Um,